And we promised that the first Mac with Apple Silicon would arrive by the end of this year. Well, that day is here. Oh my God, I've been so excited for the Apple Silicon Mac event. Tim's just finished up and we know everything there is to know about the first three new Mac models coming with Apple Silicon. I'm Gary, this is Foxtech. Let's break it down. So firstly, let's talk about the event itself. Apple somehow managed to make them even better every single time. There were about a million transitions where I was just sat there in awe and enjoying the experience of watching. The visuals and the effort they go through to make it visually enjoyable to watch is just second to none. Apple do these virtual pre-recorded events better than anyone and it's not even close really. The production quality, it was seriously impressive and for someone that's starting to get into creating videos more, I was baffled how they managed to pull off most of it. The music, that added to it too, everything just works so well together and it's up there with WWDC as my favourite event of 2020. Now, onto the juicy stuff though, the Apple Silicon Max. There were three announced and they're all running on Apple's new M1 chip, which is the first chip designed specifically for Mac. They really pushed two things, high performance while bringing improved power efficiency. On previous Macs, many different components were used alongside each other, but now, in the M1, everything's on one SOC, which makes it way more efficient. It's the first ever five nanometer computer chip and it includes 16 billion transistors. Now that sounds like a lot to me. It's got an eight core CPU with four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. The high performance cores are used for heavy workloads and individually, Apple say they are the world's fastest CPU cores. The four high efficiency cores are used for lighter tasks, but bring great performance at less power. The M1 brings the best CPU performance per watt. They showed a graph comparing CPU performance to power, and it's seriously impressive. They say that the M1 delivers significantly higher performance at every power level, and that's illustrated in this graph. It can reach the peak performance of the latest PC laptop chip whilst using a quarter of the power. That's absolutely mental. They explain it's a three times improvement in performance per watt, which is exactly what they're going for. Better performance using less power. The GPU has eight cores and this graph shows significant improvements in performance once again, across the board, reaching peak performance of a latest PC laptop chip at a third of the power. Apple Silicon and the hardware improvements are only one part of the story though, as always with Apple. The macOS Big Sur updates is the first time that macOS has been designed for their own silicon. Safari is nearly two times more responsive on macOS Big Sur on the M1 chip. Craig actually got a little bit intimate at this part, which was kind of funny. They say they've got the most advanced security of any personal computer. All of their apps are now optimized for the M1 chip and Final Cut Pro can render a timeline up to six times faster. That's great for all the video editors out there. Also, iPhone and iPad apps can run directly on Mac now. Crazy. Throughout this event, it was all about speed and power. It's all about going faster without really trying as hard. After some more incredible transitions, we got into the hardware, starting with the 13 inch MacBook Air. It's the same shell as the previous MacBook Air and with the M1 chip inside, it's still very thin and very light with great performance and battery life as you'd expect. With the M1 chip, the MacBook Air is three times faster than the previous generation with five times faster graphics performance. And they said it's faster than 98% of PCs sold last year. If that's true, then that is crazy impressive. The SSD is two times faster and there's no fan inside. A totally fanless MacBook Air so it'll stay silent, which is awesome. Battery life has greatly improved, bringing 15 hours of wireless web browsing and up to 18 hours video playback. On average, it'll basically last six hours longer and it's the longest battery life ever in a MacBook Air. They said it had an improved camera, but realistically, it's still that old 720p webcam. It's not cool in 2020. With how many video calls we're now involved in, I think that needs to get better. It comes with Touch ID and a 13 inch retina display with the brightness of 400 nits, as well as swapping a few keys around on the keyboard. It adds a spotlight, dictation, and a do not disturb in place of the keyboard brightness and the launch pad. That's a bit weird though, because I thought the keyboard brightness was one of the most useful ones. The Air starts at a price of 999 pound or 899 pound as part of the education program. That's not bad at all. The second hardware announcement was the Mac Mini, 
and this was a surprise to me. I wasn't expecting a refresh, so it was nice to see this. It offers three times faster CPU performance than the previous quad-core version and six times better graphics. It's also five times faster than the top selling PC, according to Apple that is. It comes with two USB-C ports which supports Thunderbolt and USB 4, an Ethernet port, a HDMI port, two USB-A ports and a 3.5mm headphone jack. It can be connected to Apple's Pro Display XDR at full 6K resolution if you fancy splashing out on one. What the hell is that price though? £699 really feels like a great price for this performance and if I'm honest, it looks like great value. And finally, we get to the third and final hardware announcement of the event, the 13-inch MacBook Pro. When I saw this on stage, honestly, it reminded me of the Avengers. The animations just remind me of Iron Man's suit. I'm serious. Apple really know how to make things look good, that's for sure. The 13-inch MacBook Pro weighs in at three pounds and brings up to 2.8 times faster performance and five times faster graphics. It's up to three times faster than the best-selling Windows laptop in its class. Machine learning is up to 11 times faster than the previous generation. It comes with a fan, so it's got an active cooling system in this one, which should help with that high performance for longer. Battery life is looking great on the MacBook Pro with up to 17 hours of wireless web browsing and up to 20 hours of video playback, which is 10 hours more than the previous model. It's the longest battery life ever in a Mac. It comes with the touch bar as well as improved studio quality mics and 500 nits of peak display brightness. The camera is again that same old 720p webcam, which is annoying, but maybe next year we'll finally get a HD webcam. The 13-inch Pro has two USB-C ports, which support Thunderbolt on USB 4, but only having two of them is a real shame. With the previous 13-inch MacBook Pro, you could get a model with four ports, so it's a bit disappointing that there's only two here. Finally, it comes at a starting price of £1,299 or £1,199 on the education program. On the Pro compared to the Air, you're getting two hours more battery life, better speakers, better microphones, a touch bar, an active cooling system, and 100 nits brighter screen. The base MacBook Air only has seven CPU cores compared to the eight on the Pro, but when you spec them out the same, the only real differences are the ones that I mentioned, and the price difference is about 250 quid. I'm really unsure about something though. If the MacBook Air doesn't need a fan, and it has the same M1 chip inside, then why does the Pro need a fan? Does the fan actually help, or do they not really know yet? The MacBook Air looks great, totally silent and fanless. It's awesome, just like the iPad Pro. I'm just unsure why the Pro would need a fan when they both have the same M1 chip inside. Maybe it helps for performance under prolonged heavy use, but we'll have to wait and see. I will be getting one. I've been holding off for ages using the iPad Pro as my only computer, but it's starting to become frustrating with the file management system, so I really want that MacBook Pro. It'll be interesting when we start seeing comparisons if there's much difference between the two. Are you picking up an Apple Silicon Mac, or are you waiting for the redesigned 14-inch or 16-inch model next year? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love that 14-inch model, but I just can't wait any longer. If you haven't subscribed yet, then I'd really appreciate it if you took the time and sub to the channel. Thanks for watching. This was Fox Tech, and I'll catch you in the next one.